How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Swan 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on newly formed Tropical Depression 9 and determine if this tropical disturbance has the potential of making landfall as a major hurricane in Florida by next week and determine if this will move up the east coast and bring more impacts to the states further northward. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of the content. So let's begin by taking a look at um, Tropical Depression 9 as of right now, the water vapor imagery and we do see still see those stronger northeasterly upper level winds that are imposed over this storm as of right now and have been over this storm for the past several days which has been slowing its development down which is certainly good news however this wind shear is expected to subside as this continues to head further westward as hurricane fiona continues to move further northward which would force the outflow associated with hurricane fiona away from this tropical depression for tropical storm ian the form and likely um hurricane ian in the more uh, long-term future as we do see that however we do see that there's a good amount of convection right now around the center of circulation however the uh, surface low is a little bit displaced from the convection which is the reason why we haven't seen this really intensify at a very fast rate but i expect that to change once the wind shear subsides and the mid-level and the surface low become a little bit more vertically stacked for the winds to increase as well as a convergence for this storm to rapidly intensify as this heads further westward and we do see there isn't a lot of stable air either as the air surrounding this tropical disturbance is very moist which will allow for a lot more convection to occur for this to rapidly intensify as this heads further westward which certainly is not good news if we were to take a look at the current wind shear map we do see that now it's beginning to enter the area where the wind shear is a lot weaker where it'll be able to organize itself um, a lot easier than before now that it's escaping the outflow of Fiona which is certainly a major concern because that will mean that this storm will rapidly intensify most likely in the western caribbean and will likely become a major hurricane as this enters the gulf of mexico so that's only something to pay very close attention to in the very near future especially into florida where it's becoming increasingly likely that you could experience a major hurricane making landfall somewhere along the coast of florida now take a look at what the computer models are stating at this time let's first take a look at the gfs model and there's still a high amount of uncertainty let me zoom in towards the western Atlantic and if I were to show you guys what the GFS model is expecting as of the latest um, as of the latest 18Z run, we do see that the GFS model will um, does want to begin rapidly intensifying this as soon as it passes Jamaica when it comes to longitude and we're going to see the millibar pressure quickly drop um, this is as a result of light wind shear however, your biggest question is probably where exactly the storm will go because we're still seeing a pretty large gap when it comes to the exact track of potential hurricane Ian as this continues to head for a northward because if we were to show you guys the GFS model you see that the GFS model wants to take a track a lot further westward and not only that it's definitely a lot stronger than what the European models scenario is depicting where we see the pressure drop down to 937 millibars just off the west Florida coast however there is some good news with this scenario that the GFS model is forecasting because if I were to continue to move forward it wouldn't make landfall until it's a much weaker storm where the pressure does rise to around 979 millibars which is equivalent more towards um, maybe high end category two hurricane, which would certainly be good news that it wouldn't impact the Florida coast as a major hurricane, but it's still a very powerful storm. So you don't want to underestimate this storm just because it might not be um, as strong as you anticipated because the 979 millibar storm is still quite strong. However, it's definitely a lot better better than let's say a 940 millibar hurricane making landfall along the coast of florida now take a look at what the european model is stating as of the latest 12 z run so if i were to continue move forward we do see that the european model is leaning towards the track a lot further eastward and it does want to make a landfall towards the southwestern portion of florida right around 900 where the um, storm's pressure is right around 950 millibars which is easily a category three close to a 
Category 4 hurricane, which would bring major impacts to the coast of Florida, which is certainly a major concern. And unfortunately, it seems likely at this point, the United States will at least experience some sort of direct impacts associated with potential Hurricane Ian, as it does seem likely at this point that this will move completely out to sea and not impact anyone along the united states coast that's still technically a possibility but the chances are low as i'd say the most likely scenario at this time is that this will make landfall somewhere along the coast of florida exactly where though has yet to be seen it really all depends on several factors because like i've been saying um when it comes to the short-term factors that may affect the track of this storm like i said if this storm ends up becoming a little bit stronger then it's more likely the upper level winds will manipulate the storm's track more so it'll stay a little bit further southward for longer since the northeasterly upper level winds would force it a little bit further southward before it takes that turn north which would force that which would force the storm's trajectory to move a little bit further westward which would be more in line with what the gfs computer model is stating however if this storm remains a little bit weaker than expected or if the surface low ends up developing a little bit further northward than anticipated as the computer models have a difficult time determining determining where exactly that cer where the center of circulation for a potential tropical storm will develop so we're gonna need to wait and see where that center of circulation develops because there's that possibility the center of circulation could jump a little bit further south which could mean a big difference when it comes to the trajectory so if the center of circulation does end up developing a little bit further northward to where the mid-level low will sort of converge towards the surface low rather than the other way around then we're more likely to see a track further eastward where it would impact impact more so the southwestern coast of Florida as well as the southeastern coast of Florida which would bring more significant impacts for the southern coast of Florida rather than the Florida panhandle so still a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the exact track and it's not only the short-term factors that will play a role when it comes to the trajectory of the storm we also need to take a look at the more um, long-term factors where um, where this storm approaches uh, Gulf of Mexico because that's not going to be the only factor because if I were to show you guys as the storm approaches Florida we're going to see a big trough dig in um, throughout um, through the northeastern portion of the United States and that could definitely um, play a big role when it comes to a track of this storm because if I were to show you guys what the European model is forecasting the European model does expect this trough to dig down through the northeast united states however there's another pretty big dip right behind it which would linger this trough around a little bit more and that would um and that would shift the wind direction to more of a southwesterly direction for longer which would shift this storm's track um further um close along the east coast and going more towards the atlantic rather than inland so if i were to show you guys what the european model is forecasting at this time we do see that as this trough exits to the northeast there's another trough right behind it and still a pretty significant jet stream dip throughout the northeastern portion of the united states which means that the southwestern winds will continue for this storm to potentially hug the east coast where potentially um the coast um where potentially the um, coasts that are just north of Florida could receive impacts and in fact could strengthen a little bit once it enters the Atlantic well at least outside of the Gulf of Mexico where we do see the pressure drop just off the Carolinas down in 962 millibars and makes landfall somewhere between South and North Carolina and even as the storm heads to the Northeast it still has a little bit of punch to it to bring some impacts to the Northeast states as well however if we were to take a look at the GFS model the GFS model expects this trough to move eastward a lot quicker and this ridge to build in a lot quicker than what the European model is forecasting. And what that means is that there's going to be less of a southwesterly push to push the storm more to the northeast. And rather, it'll stay a little bit further westward and move a little bit more slowly because there's going to be a big ridge that's going to try to push it southward. But we still have this big Bermuda Azores High and, of course, this small um, weakness in ridging that's 
gonna try to steer to the northeast so it's gonna so if the gfs models scenario were correct then we'd see a slower storm that'll move a little bit further westward which would bring more impacts of florida panhandle and um it would and while it would still bring rain along the east coast of the united states it wouldn't be anywhere near as significant as what the european model is forecasting so still a lot of uncertainty we're gonna need to see how much of a dip we're gonna see um, when it comes up uh, um, the jet stream um, as this approaches the Caribbean that's gonna take several days to determine it and we're gonna need to see how fast this second trough uh, moves through the northeastern portion of the United States because if it lingers around a little bit more like the European model is forecasting then we could be in for a storm that will ride along the northeast coast and bring more impacts along the east coast rather than this the west coast of florida and the florida panhandle so we're gonna need to just wait and see however it seems likely we're gonna see a major hurricane enter the caribbean by next week and it's likely at this point at least somewhere in florida you will experience direct impacts and what's becoming a little bit more unlikely is that um is a possibility that we'd see this move any further west westward than the panhandle of florida as there it doesn't seem like there's going to be enough ridging that's going to steer it let's say somewhere um very far um to the distant west like mississippi or louisiana as most likely um somewhere along the florida coast you will experience direct impacts associated with potential hurricane ian and of course in terms of strength forecast this is likely to develop into a major hurricane because showing you guys the mid-level relative humidity we do see there's not going to be a lot of dry air that's going to entrain it and what's um and what we could hope for the most is that this trough brings a high amount of stability um, um into the storm center circulation which is certainly a possibility we're entering the month of october soon so a lot of these cold fronts do have a lot of dry and stable air right behind it so there is that possibility um we could see a little bit of dry air and train the center circulation and weaken the storm a little bit just before landfall which would certainly be um the best case scenario however i don't think it's going to be significant enough to let's say completely uh, of course com um, com um this storm not um completely fizzling out is completely out of the realm of possibilities but it won't it likely this dry air won't likely won't be enough to spare florida from major impacts but it certainly could be enough to weaken this storm quite a bit before landfall which certainly the hope and that's what the gfs model is sort of forecasting but it still makes landfall close to a category three type hurricane at 968 millibars despite the amount of dry air so more likely than not we're going to see a major hurricane make landfall as the wind shear is going to be extremely light through the caribbean and the eastern gulf of mexico and that will allow this storm to be very strong at landfall which certainly isn't good news but the best we could hope is that there's going to be um a little bit um more upper level winds than ex expected for the northern gulf of mexico and a little bit more dry air than anticipated for northern gulf of mexico which is certainly a possibility but it won't be enough to spare florida from major impacts now take a look at the scenario that at the um large area of scenarios so there's pretty much two scenarios this saws out further westward and impacts more of the pan handle florida while scenario one takes us towards southern florida and impacts potentially more of the east coast of the united states so we're going to need to pay very close attention to how the scenarios will shift over the next several days and we're going to need to see really determine first where that center circulation develops because that will play a big role in terms of the exact trajectory of this storm and of course the troughing in the northern united states will also play a factor when it comes to the track so i'll keep you guys updated regarding that that. and in terms of what the ensemble members are stating we do see that the european model, model most of the ensemble members want to take this towards southern florida with very few of them taking it towards the florida panhandle and what's concerning about the european ensemble members is that we have a scary amount of them why and take this uncomfortably close to the states a little bit further northward such as north carolina and the mid-atlantic so this could potentially be a threat beyond florida for the east coast the united states so it's at least something to be aware of up along the east coast even for states just north of florida is definitely something to keep in mind over the next several days and take a look at the gfs ensemble members um, while 
um, um, the GFS model is leaning more towards the install members moving a little bit further westward, but still, um, but when it comes to the average, it still wants to take a landfall somewhere close to Tampa, which would definitely be concerning because, of course, Tampa, Tampa is very vulnerable to storm surge, and that would be extremely dangerous if this storm were to take a trajectory close to Tampa to where it could maximize that storm surge. So we're going to need to pay close attention to how the ensemble members ship because it's still far from certain um, over the next um, several days. Now, taking a look at the model intensity guidance, and pretty much a vast majority of them take this to hurricane status, and quite a few of them take this to major hurricane status which is definitely a major concern we're going to need to pay close attention if that um stays around but i'd say i'm um, seeing a major hurricane is more likely than not at this point now taking a look at the rainfall forecast for um florida but over the next five days and you see that florida could be in for up to 10 inches of rain especially towards southern florida of course it really um how much rain you receive really all depends on the track which is still highly uncertain at this point with both the european and the gfs model taking pretty um um pretty um big differences when it comes to the track so we're gonna need to see which track is the right one before we could say with certainty how much rain you'll receive but it seems like a heavy rain threat and a flash flood threat is likely associated with hurricane with potential hurricane ian as it continues ahead for a north run and here's my track and strength forecast when it comes to major hurricane ian so i do expect this to develop into a hurricane somewhere between um sunday to monday night i accidentally put sunday on this um on that um graphic i apologize it's supposed to be monday at 95 miles per hour but if i were to continue to move forward we do see that i'm expecting this to develop into potentially into a major hurricane by the wednesday time frame um so definitely keep that in mind and this is supposed to read as thursday i i um apologize so but um keep this in mind that a major hurricane is going straight is expected to go straight towards florida but there's still a high amount of uncertainty of where exactly this will go so make sure to pay close attention to that if you live along the coast of florida but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content i hope you guys have a great day